Hello everyone, welcome back to the Let's Make a Python Discord Bot from Scratch series. This is episode 5. In the previous episode, we learned how to create a YAML config file, which you can see here, and then use our Python code to hide our bot token in an environment variable to protect it from getting stolen. In this episode, we will look at how to create a COG to start working on our bot in multiple files to keep things clean and organized. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Just a quick reminder for you guys as always, if you guys have not seen the episodes before this, I highly recommend that you go watch those first because we'll be starting with our code where we left off from the previous episodes. Alright, so in order to get started with a multi-file system, we will of course have to create another file. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder, which I'm going to call cogs, inside of our folder here. And then now in our cogs folder, I'm going to create a file which I'm going to call general.py. And this is where we'll be creating our cog. But before we actually create our cog, we're going to need to go back into our main.py and start diving into the code a little bit. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and say extensions equals, and we're going to go ahead and create a list, which is going to be square brackets. And we're going to, in our list, we're going to add in cogs.general. All right, so to explain a little bit about what's going on here, this is a list variable. A list variable has a list of items in it. In this case, we're going to be creating a list of strings. So if we were to add more cogs in the future, which is why you would use the system is if you need multiple cogs, you would then be able to say cogs.test, for example. And what's going to happen is when our bot loads cogs.general, which we'll do here in a minute, it's going to reference the cogs folder. And in that cogs folder, it's going to look for a general file. Now, of course, if I could say just general, now it would expect this general file to be over here. So now it's on the same level. So if we were to say now load general, it would now find general.py in this section. If we put it inside of a cogs folder, now we need to add cogs dot. And now if we were to also say uh, dot test dot general, now in here, if we were to create another folder and call it test and put our general.py file in there, this would now be getting loaded. So that's just a quick example of how uh, file trees are represented in a string for this system in particular. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up all of that. There we go, and get rid of the cogs.test because that's not a thing that we're trying to load. All right, so now we have our extensions here. And one quick change I'm going to make to this, I'm going to so say sorted. I'm going to put this list inside of a sorted function. And what this function does is it takes a list of items inside of it and it tries to sort it however possible. So in this case, since we're giving it strings, it's going to sort it by alphabetical order. So if we were to add another cog and we were to say cogs.abc or something, this would then sort it so that it would be, the list is actually going to be cogs.abc and then cogs.general. This is a purely aesthetic change. It's purely personal opinion. I like to keep things alphabetical order and organized um, just because when we print out when a cog is loaded, I'd like it to appear in order just for the sake of keeping our logs uh, organized. All right, so now that we have our list of extensions, we have to actually load our extensions. So I'm going to say for extension in extensions. What this is going to do is it's going to access our extensions list, and it's going to say for extension in that. So it's going to loop through every single item one by one in our list here, and it's going to assign it to the variable extension. And then if I were to say print extension, this is going to get executed every single, like one, everything inside of here is going to get executed once per item in the list. So if we had a second item here, for example, this would print out cogs.general and then, and then on a second loop through, it'd print out test. And those are on two separate loops. So everything in here is going to happen for every item in this list. And we're going to go ahead and say bot.load extension. Extension. That's all there is to it for our main file, is we're going to take the extension from the list and we're going to load it in our bot. But now we have to actually give it something to load inside of this general file. So to get started with that, we're going to go ahead and import Discord, and we're going to go ahead and import our say from discord.ext, again that's discord.extensions, we're going to import the commands module. And this is going to be what we're using for the majority of the content of this file. Anyways, now what we're going to create is we're going to create a class. Now, classes in Python are a very powerful tool. 
and I'm going to kind of give a very brief overview of the kind of the basic functionality of it in this case. Um, the first thing that kind of ha we have to happen here though is we need to name our cog or our, our class. Sorry, in this case, I'm going to call it General, and we're going to say this is going to be commands.cog. Now this is what's called inheritance for a cog. Um, basically, what this means is that command the commands module also has a class called cog. And by, by making our general class inherit from cog, we gain access to a lot of the properties and methods that are in the cog class, which again, both property and a method and those attributes will be going over exactly what those mean here in a little bit. Um, probably not in this video, but in another video soon. But basically what this means is that we're getting access to a lot of the tools in the cog class within the commands module. And we're gonna go ahead and name it as well. In this case, I'm gonna call it general. Now normally in Python, if you're just creating a simple class, you could say class test, and that would be it. You can just, that's it, you can start creating your class. But since we need to have inheritance and we wanna pass it a name as well, this is what we're gonna call it. And we're gonna to have to call it that. Anyways, now inside of here, we're going to define an init function, and that's surrounded by two underscores on both sides. And here we're gonna say self and bot, and I'll explain this again in just a moment, but for now I just wanna type it up so we have something to work with. Self dot bot, I can't spell self equals bot. Okay, so to explain a little bit about the init function, whenever you create an instance of your class, the init function is going to be called immediately to kind of set up your class essentially. So in our case, we're going to be using the self variable, and the self variable just references the class itself. So, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Self is itself. And then we're also going to give it a, we don't, so we don't need to give it itself because it knows what itself is. And then we do have to give it the bot variable so that it can assign self.bot equals bot. You remember doing attributes in here saying bot.playing status? Well, if you'll notice right here, we create a commands.bot. Commands.bot, that's a class. And we're creating an instance of it by passing all this information in. And then we can add bot attributes by saying bot.playing status. So in this case, we're just adding an attribute to itself from within itself. So we're saying self.bot equals bot. Anyways, now we're gonna go ahead and print. We're gonna say uh, loaded general cog. And this is just for our sake of logging to know when our cog has been added to our system. Anyways, now we're gonna come down here outside of our class and we're going to define the setup. And we're gonna have that need a variable of bot passed in. And we're gonna say bot dot add cog. We're gonna create an instance of our class here, we'll see general. And we're gonna say add that bot. Okay, so now let's explain the system of what we've just created a little bit. We're completely done. It's all working now. We just need to. I just want to explain exactly how this works. So we have our list of cogs. Our bot loads each cog, and when it, for example, gets to cogs.general, it's going to access this function. Sorry, this file, and look for this function, the setup function. It is going to call that function, passing itself, the bot variable, in. And so we can say is we're going to add a cog to that bot, and that cog is going to be general, and we're going to also give it bot as an argument. So by giving it bot, you'll see right here, we pass in the bot argument. Self doesn't need to be passed in because it already knows what itself is. And we're going to assign bot to be self.bot. And then we're going to print loaded the cog because we've successfully loaded it. That's it. So that's kind of explanation of how that works. And then, for example, let's give for example just for more functionality on classes. I can define a function called test, which is going to have self and nothing else, just self. I can now print self.bot.prefix from within this. And now if I were to say, uh, let's put this in here. This is just an example. I'm gonna be removing this in a moment. But if I have a general.bot, I can assign that to a variable. And I could say general.test, which is going to call the test function from within general. And what this means is that now it's just gonna print out the prefix. But since we already passed it the bot when we first created it, it knows what the bot variable is. And so it can already print out the self.bot.prefix because it's just accessing the bot.prefix variable, which we set right here. So it already exists. We're just accessing it from within our system now. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all that. And since all this seems to be working now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is open up our folder and I'm gonna go ahead and run our program. 
You'll see your hair, it loaded the cog, and then it logged into Discord. I'm not gonna bother showing you Discord because we haven't added any new functionality in that regard, but that's it. We've now created a cog, which is in a separate file, created our class, or sorry, the actual, we created an extension, which is this other file. The cog is this general class. And then in our extension, we are loading that cog into our bot. And yeah, so that's about it. As always, if something hasn't worked correctly, try and go back through the video to find your error or look for a typo in your code. Next time, we will learn how to add some commands to our general cogs, such as an uptime and a ping command. And of course, if you guys enjoyed or found this video helpful, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. The support has been awesome, and I've been having a blast making this series. We have reached almost 100 subscribers on YouTube, which is very exciting, and our Discord server, link in the description, has also reached almost 100 members. We're at around 80 on both, I believe. If you are interested in our Discord, I'll have the invite link in the description, like I just mentioned. And as always, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.